Well, what's up? Chester Airby Church Devotional Podcast. Thanks for being with us. John chapter 7. Just a few verses today. We'll get started in just a sec. Gives me grace for every trial. Feeds me with the living bread. All right. Well, thank you so much again for being with us today. I'm Clint Davis, your host. It is a joy to be with you as we read the Bible, discuss it. That's what we do. Do us a favor. Share this podcast with others if you find it encouraging. We're approaching 700 podcasts on the devotional podcast. That's pretty crazy. And uh, just pressing on as uh, God has given us faithfulness or God has given us grace to do it. He has been faithful to us. John chapter 7, beginning in verse 10. But after his brothers had gone up to the feast, that's after Jesus' brothers had gone to the feast, uh, a feast in Jerusalem. It's the Feast of Booths. Jesus also went up, but he didn't go in public. Publicly, he went privately. Jews were looking for him at the feast and saying, where is he? And there was much muttering about him among the people. Some said he was a good man. Others said, no, he is leading people astray. Yet for fear of the Jews, no one spoke openly about him. There's a feast going on, a feast of tabernacles, feast of booths. In the history of God's people, they celebrated a feast, uh, a religious feast and a celebration in remembrance of the time in which they walked in the wilderness and they lived in tents or tabernacles or booths. Um, We would call it tents. And so as they were on this wilderness journey and how God had been faithful to them as they were on this wilderness journey for 40 years, uh, you know that story in the history of God's people perhaps where uh, they come out of the Exodus and God has taken them into the promised land and gives them the covenant of Mount Sinai through Moses. He gives them the Ten Commandments. Moses is on top of the mountain. The people decide, they're going to worship Baal because they're frustrated. They think that they uh, have been brought out on a wild goose chase, and, and they're angry and frustrated because they're having to eat manna and not eat meat, and they have the audacity to think it was better in Egypt than it is now. It's better to live in slavery than it is to live in freedom with God. And and so they, they have all these different things. They, they revert back to their past, and so they make this golden calf, and then they are disobedient to the Lord and then they go through the process of getting close to the promised land. They send spies into the promised land, and it's in 12, two of them, Joshua and Caleb. And they get scared, and they say, you know, we're not going to go in there because the report is these people are big and strong and powerful. There's no way we can overcome them in their cities. And so we might as well just hang out right here instead of going to the promised land. That's the report of the 10 spies. Two of them say, you know what? No, we can go in there with God's help. We'll take care of this land. We'll we'll." we'll inhabit the land will be victorious and the people of God ultimately decide they don't want to go into the promised land so they rebel and then God sends them on this wilderness journey for 40 years but God is faithful to them through the process Um, he provides for them and their shoes never run out their clothes never get holes and, and and they never run out of clothes they always have what they need and he provides bread from heaven etc so uh, the entirety of John's gospel but particularly chapter 6 and 7 and 8 are really rooted in these historical na- narrative of God's holy people bread from heaven in chapter 6 now the feast of booths and uh, the celebration of God's faithfulness to them so it's, it's in the middle of that setting Jesus shows up Now, people have gathered around, right? They've come to the feast. They've come to be a part of the feast. They've come to to celebrate God and his faithfulness. And they're they're, they're heightened religiously. Uh, Their senses, their religious senses are heightened. Their commitment, their devotion are are heightened at this moment. Jesus goes up in private because he knows his time's not yet. He doesn't want to be arrested yet. He doesn't feel like it's time to be made king, right? He's just not time, so he's not going to go yet. His brothers have already said, you need to go publicly. He's not, I'm not going to do that. So his brothers go, literally his physical brothers go to the feast. Jesus goes up in private after them. And uh, he's there kind of milling around, and he overhears these conversations. And John tells us that the Jews were seeking to kill him. Uh, They were looking for him at his feast. Where is he? And when John uses the word Jews, it typically means the leaders 
of the Jewish community, not just ordinary Jews, not just the crowd, but he's talking about the leaders, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the, those who are in charge, and they're looking for Jesus. Why? Well, some of them are looking to kill him. Others want to test him. Others want to explore more about him, but they're looking for Jesus. Where is he? Much murmuring, John says, about Jesus, of course, right? He's this. He's well into his public ministry now. People hearing about what he has to say. Word is spreading Miracles are happening, etc. And so people are talking about him. And there's a division among the people, a variety of opinions. Some say he's a good man, and some some say, no, he's leading people astray. But yet no one spoke openly. This was a, 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 a murmuring a, a behind the scenes, kind of a secret conversation that was being had away from the Jews. Right, The Jews, the leaders, were looking for him. They were afraid of them. And so the people, the everyday person, was just having a conversation. And they were having quiet conversations. What do you think about Jesus? What do you think about Jesus? What do you think about Jesus? In some ways, it's kind of like gossip. We might call it, well, I heard this. Well, I heard that. They were literally gossiping. And, and not in a bad way, but they're gossiping about Jesus. They're trying to have a conversation about who Jesus is. There's a variety of opinions. I think I said yeah last time we read that that we shouldn't give up on those who don't know the Lord because that doesn't mean just because they don't believe now doesn't mean God's done with them. But I think here we also ought to recognize that we should be pleased when there's a lot of conversation about Jesus. Who is he? What do you think he is? No, what do you think he is? What do you think he is? And we ought to be entering that conversation. That's actually a good thing. I think because that that means people are are intrigued, they're engaged, they're asking that hard question perhaps, who is Jesus? Who do you think he is? Well, who do you think he is? Well, I heard this. Well, I heard that. It's conversation about Jesus where people are intrigued, people are answering, people are engaging with the reality of who he is. It's opportunity for us because then we can say, well, he's the son of the living God and we begin to have that conversation more openly. That's where I think a lot of us struggle. We 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 fall we fall into to believing in our society that because our leaders perhaps do not prize religious freedom on either side of the aisle anymore. The, the, the desire uh by the elites perhaps is to have this uh entirely secular society. Um that doesn't mean that's where everybody else is. In fact, the everyday person, many of us are having this conversation. We're trying to explore, right, who Jesus is, what, what's life about, who am I, where did I come from, what is my purpose. Those are conversations that we already are to have, and, and we could fall into the trap of believing no one cares. No, a lot of people do care. Most everybody cares, especially in these United States of America. Most everybody cares. And so they're having those very deep conversations, and they're open to having those deep conversations. We've got to be open to having those deep conversations with them, just like the crowd here in Jerusalem. Where is he? Where is he? What do you think about him? I don't know. What do you think about him? I don't know. What do, well, I think he's a good man. Well, I don't know. He's causing uprising. What do you think? Right? That's constantly going on, and we've got to be willing to step into those conversations to be able to speak the truth of Jesus, but also to say, you know what? This is who he is. And be thankful that those conversations do exist. You guys have a great day. God bless you. I'll catch you on the next time. Uh, have a great day. You can.